This is the story of Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. To play the story right now, press the green forward button. If you'd like to read the story yourself, you can switch between the play mode and the read mode by pressing the blue mode button. You can move through the story by using the green forward button and the pink back button. To pause the story, press the orange pause button. You can quit at any time by pressing the red quit button. So, press the green forward button and let's begin now. In the whimsical town of Whoville, all the Who's liked Christmas a lot. But just north of Whoville lived the Grinch and his dog Max. The Grinch detested and despised Christmas. Staring down at Whoville, where happy Who's scurried here and there, he bristled. This whole Christmas season is stupid! Meanwhile, in Whoville, Postmaster Lou Lou Who was purchasing presents with his five-year-old Who, Cindy Lou Who. Lou purchased two snoozel phones for Cindy's two brothers. He also grabbed gifts for Who aunts, uncles, and cousins. But his sweet little tot was puzzled. Was all this really Christmas? Then. Who should the father and girl meet than teenaged Who's, Christina, Stu, Junie, and Drew? The four teens told a terrifying tale. They had been exploring Mount Crumpet, and the Grinch himself had scared them silly. Cindy's eyes opened wide. Why won't anyone talk about the Grinch? Just saying the name Grinch filled the townsfolk with fear, even though Mayor Mayhew told them not to worry. Still, Cindy wanted to know more. She decided to discover the forgotten facts about the Grinch. The Grinch often slithered through Whoville, pulling pranks so naughty and nasty they would make a skunk hold its nose. He'd act like a chair and push who sitters out of his seat. Or he'd roll a ball at the mall to make who's slip, skip, trip, and flip. When Cindy and Lou arrived home, who mom Betty Lou Who was festooning their Who house with lights. She wanted to win the Whoville decorating contest. This is the year. Betty Lou thought of nothing else during the holiday season. She felt her fate was to finally finish first, far ahead of her neighbor, Martha May Whovier. Martha was sweeter than the sweetest Who pudding, though she wished to win too. As Lou got twisted and tangled in the lights, Martha May called from across the street. Good night, Betty. Returning to his cave, the Grinch was happy to behold heaps of rubbish piling up from the town below. For you see, this rancid refuse provided the power for the Grinch's dank dwelling. Cindy, in her search for Who Truth, asked doddering Who Biddies, Clarnella and Rose, about the Grinch's peculiar past. They had raised him from Grinch baby to Grinch boy. Clarnella claimed he came the way all Who Babies come. On calm nights, baby Who girls and tiny Who fellas <gasps> drift from the sky in their own pumber cellars. 
we knew right away that he was special. As a boy, the Grinch loved Christmas almost as much as he adored young Martha. Martha thought he was quite cute too. But the furry green Grinch was teased, especially by young Mayhu. You're eight years old and you have a beard. Undaunted, the young Grinch began to fashion something special to make Martha merry at the school gift exchange. Tinkering and thinkering, he took some silverware, a bicycle beeper, and other oddities and made them into an enchanting angel. This will be perfect on the top of a tree. Then he switched on the shaver and sloppily sheared his face. Unfortunately, the Grinch's grooming was grotesque. He skulked back to school, sporting a small sack on his head. There, everyone was exchanging gifts. Merry Christmas, Martha May. The future mayor scoffed at the angel and the sack. He's embarrassed by that idiot's gift. Teacher Miss Ruhu asked the Grinch to take off the bag. The Who children laughed and leered at the Grinch's horrible haircut until he could stand it no more. He stamped and stomped. He tore and tossed. He shouted and shattered. Stupid Trevor! I hate Christmas! He lifted their tremendous tree like it was a twig. Then the lampooned lad loped to Lonely Mount Crumpet. With all this knowledge gnawing at her noggin, Cindy made a decision. As the Who's wondered who their next holiday cheermeister should be, Cindy spoke up. Mayor Mayhu and the townspeople cringed at her idea, but Cindy quietly quoted from the great book of Who. It goes to the soul at Christmas who needs it most. Little Cindy crept cautiously to the Grinch's cave to invite him. The Grinch greeted her with a growl. How dare you enter the Grinch! Cute but courageous, Cindy was not crushed. She simply stated the information about the hubration, adding, Martha May will be there. At the hubration, Betty was close to claiming the contest crown. But Sneaky Mayhu stated that Martha had won. The Grinch then entered to the booze of Who's. But true to Who tradition, he was made cheermeister. Hoisted high on the chair of cheer, his initial honor was having gallons of Who pudding sent galloping down his Grinch gullet. On Mayhu's command, the Grinch was dragged into dizzying dances. He was fed piles of pies, carts of cakes, and crates of cookies. He slogged through sack races. Suddenly, mean Mayor Mayhu presented one more present. The gift of a Christmas shade. Gales of giggles greeted the grimacing Grinch. Then, Mayhu festooned Martha with fabulous gifts, including an engagement ring. This was too much for the Grinch. Gift, 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 gift. That's what it's always been about. Gifts, gifts. In his fury, he torched the town tree and blasted back to Mount Crumpet.
Around his place, the Grinch paced and paced. I know just what to do. Then he got an awful idea. He'd suit up like Santa Claus. He'd slap together a sleigh. He'd rig up Max as a reindeer. Soon they were flying off so fast they almost collided with a faintly familiar fellow. Oh, 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 hey, hey. At the first Who house, the old Grinchy Claws grabbed his bags and bounded below. The chimney was more cramped than he'd counted on, but he crammed his body down, getting stuck just once. Soon the Who stockings inside the house were history. The tree was taken and the gifts were gone. These same horrors happened at every Who house. The Grinch grabbed gifts from bicycles and tricycles to drums and plums. Upon entering Mayor Mayhew's mansion, the Grinch glimpsed the Whoville Cheermeister Award and rightfully recaptured it. He even visited marvelous Martha's home, making off with the engagement ring from Mayhew. The Grinch stole undiscovered until he was uncovered in the house of none other than Cindy Lou Who. Cindy stared at the Grinch. Santa, don't forget the Grinch. I know he's mean and hairy and smelly, but I think he's actually kind of sweet. Beneath his green fur, Grinch blushed red as a ripe radish. Just the same, he shinnied up the chimney, even lugging the log from the fire. No food for the feast, no gifts for the giving, no light strings that stay lit even when one goes out, no anything. His booty bagged, it was time to travel 10,000 feet to the tip top of Mount Crumpet to dump it, like so much who trash. At the top, he lingered to listen for every who wah and bask in every who ba. Though Mayor Mayhew did moan that Christmas was ruined, it was Lou Lou Who who stood to speak for the true spirit. I'm glad he took our presents. You can't hurt Christmas, Mr. Mayor, because it isn't about the, the gifts or the contest or the fancy lights. And that, that's what Cindy's been trying to tell everyone. And me. I don't need anything more for Christmas than this right here. <laughs> My family. Then the Grinch heard a sound in the soul of the season that slowly slid over the snow. Singing. Without toys, treats, or tinsel and trappings, all who's of all ages, of all sizes, was singing, with bells ringing. The Grinch had not stopped Christmas from coming. It came swifter, sweeter, and stronger than anyone in Whoville could recall. Just imagine the perplexing puzzlement that now plagued the pondering Grinch. He simply stood still struggling and straining. How could it be so? We came without packages, boxes, or bags! Then, he thought of something he hadn't before. The Grinch finally figured out how the Who's happened to be so happy. Maybe Christmas, he sighed to himself. Isn't store-bought stuff, nor simply stockings, tempting treats or presents in pretty paper. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. He 
scrambled to stop the sleigh from slipping over the snowy mountain. Suddenly, the situation grew worse, for sitting on top of the sleigh was a sweet little who. The Grinch shuddered. <laughs> what are you doing up there? I came to see you. The Grinch grinned at the girl and the gentle, genuine joy of this magical moment made the Grinch's tiny heart grow ten tremendous times. Now the spirit of Christmas surged strongly in the Grinch. His super strength became so spectacular, he scooped up the whole sleigh and saved Cindy. The sleigh whisked back to town like the wind. Seeing the sleigh sliding toward the city, Betty and Martha May forgot their feud and stretched their light strings so the sleigh could be stopped. In his soiled Santa suit, the Grinch said he was sorry. And he was fully forgiven by the fair-minded Hoos. All the while, Martha was searching the sack on the sleigh. When she found the engagement ring, she returned it to a red-faced Mayhu. Martha stood by her grinchy sweetheart, who gleefully got all the town lights glowing gloriously again. Little Cindy the who who knew there was more to Christmas than credit cards and more to the Grinch than growls gave her furry friend a kiss. If you really want to quit, click on the picture of the Grinch. To keep playing, click on the picture of Cindy Lou Who. Yes, 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 yes.